evening, His Excellency Acting Governor Mr. Franz Manderson and Mrs. Nuvia Manderson, Acting Deputy Governor Mrs. Mary Rodriguez, Premier the Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Ministers of Cabinet, Chief Officers, Heads of Departments, Human Resource Managers, Special Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to this momentous Deputy Governor's Employee of the Year Award Ceremony to recognize all civil servants who continue to go above and beyond the call of duty but especially for one individual who truly symbolizes the values and standards that is expected of all civil servants. I'm Donna Bush, your MC for this evening. Thanks for being here. At this time, I would like to invite President of the Civil Service Association, Mr. James Watler, to offer us a word of prayer. If I'm not imposing too much, please stand as we go to prayer. Father, we come before you this evening with a grateful heart. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for each one here present. And Lord, we especially thank you for those who have put the sh their shoulders to the wheel. They have stood the test, we've stood the test. They have done their very best. And Lord, you expect of all of us our best. Here we have a cadre of persons, civil servants, who have done exactly that. They've given of their best. Lord, we pray that each one of us here would, would follow in their footsteps to be the best that we can be as we deliver the kind and the quality service that is expected of us as workers within the government sector. Help us, Lord, to, to give our all at all times, to give of our best, and to be the kinds of persons, Lord, that you have ordained us to be. We thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for health and strength. These honored guests, Lord, who have really done their endeavor best, we ask that your blessings will be upon all of us this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Watler. I would like to now invite His Excellency, the Acting Governor, Mr. Franz Manderson, to say a few words. Mr. Manderson. Thank you, Donna, and good evening, everyone. It's ex extremely exciting for me to be here. Uh, protocol has been established, but I do want to uh, say a special welcome to our Premier and to all of the uh, winners of the awards uh, for the Deputy Governor's Awards and the Chief Officer Awards. Uh, every few weeks uh, on a Friday morning at 7.30, I go down to the um, big conference room at, at the Government Administration Building and I swear in uh, new citizens. And as part of the, of the speech that I give to them before we actually take the, um, the oath or the pledge, I say to them that the success of a country is determined by the quality of its citizens. And that Cayman is not the special place that it is because we have nice beaches or uh, year-round sunshine. It is because of the people that we have in this country, our citizens, our residents, all who work together to make Cayman the place it is. And the same applies to our civil service. The civil service is the way it is because of the tremendous talent that we have in our civil service. And that's the reason why we're here tonight, is to recognize those civil servants who have done exceedingly well over the last year. You all know when you read the blogs and you look at the newspaper sometime that the civil service doesn't get the credit that we deserve. Uh, but in creating this award, the chief officers and I had a vision that we would showcase our talent, that we would show the Cayman Islands and all its people some of the brave, dedicated, hardworking, innovative, committed, politically neutral civil servants that we have in our civil service. And we have done that. And when you listen to 
some of the reasons why we had uh, the winners that we have here tonight, you will see that everything I just said is captured in what they have done for the government and the people of the Cayman Islands. And I'm exceptionally proud to be the head of, head of a civil service that has such high caliber persons in them. Please give the nominees and the winners a, a, a round of applause, please. I have gone out on departmental visits and I've seen the civil service at work, whether it's seven o'clock in the morning or, or, or late at night. And I see that we do so many good things, but of course there's a few sometimes, like I said, bad things that get uh, reported. But we do so many good things all the time. You know, at immigration we check in thousands of passengers a week and nobody ever seems to take that for granted. The police deal with, again, hundreds of complaints. Our customs does the same. Our customer service agents deal with thousands of people. And a lot of it is without complaints. But it's sometimes the one thing that goes wrong that is on the front page of the compass. So again, we want to showcase our talent. We want to show that we have some exceptional civil servants um, here. I think that um, being deputy governor is, and head of the civil service is a privilege in that I get to, to lead such a fantastic organization, work with chief officers, work, work with staff to develop, to develop and, and implement the policies of the government of the day, because that is really um, our job. And we must always do that with passion and, and conviction. You know, I have made some tough decisions in my, in my life, in my working life, but I must tell you, trying to decide the one winner for tonight has been by far one of the most difficult decisions that I've had to make. I think it took me about three to four days to look over the, the, uh, the nomination forms, to look at all of the uh, evaluations, to try and make that decision. It was very difficult. Um, but I'm very happy with the decision I made, and I'm sure uh, you will as well. But in closing, I just want to say how proud I am to be um, Deputy Governor and Head of the Civil Service. I'm acting Governor now, but as you know, I'm, 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 that, that is my substantive post. So I tried to make a speech that was both acting Governor and Deputy Governor, so I didn't want to take away from, Ms., um, um, from what Ms. Rodriguez has to say. But again, I'm very proud to lead an organization that has so many committed uh, civil servants. And um, I want you to sit back and enjoy the evening. And I look forward to speaking with you after the program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manderson. I'd like to now call on Acting Deputy Governor, Mrs. Mary Rodriguez, for her remarks. Good evening, everyone. Protocol having been established, please allow me to address you as distinguished ladies and gentlemen, award nominees. It's a special night. Welcome everyone to Government House and I'm indeed delighted to extend a very warm welcome and my sincere congratulations to all of our 2012-13 Deputy Governor's Awards nominees. I also take pleasure in welcoming your colleagues and your loved ones who are here to share this momentous occasion with you. I'd also like to share a little bit about, in terms of providing you with the context for the Deputy Governor's Awards. These awards were launched in August 2012 as an extension of the Governor's Five Star Award for Customer Service Excellence, also known as the FACE Awards. The Deputy Governor's Award program is an internal recognition program in which managers, heads of department, and chief officers recognize staff for their pursuit of excellence. As such, there are three layers to this award program, and while the scheme begins with a head of department nominating a staff member, the first award layer is the chief officer's choice. Um, at this level, chief officers review all nominations that we receive from heads of department. The next layer is the employee of the month. And these selections are made by an executive selection committee who consists of the deputy governor and chief officers. And finally, the employee of the year. 
which we are going to be celebrating tonight. The individual who receives this award is selected solely, as you've heard Mr. Manderson say, by the Deputy Governor. He reviews each of the 11 Employees of the Month nominations, as well as their performance assessment to determine who he thinks should be selected for this accolade. And of course, there's only one possible winner tonight. Now, I, I hasten to say that as Acting Deputy Governor, I certainly had no, no role in, in, in selection. In fact, I made Mr. Manderson and his PA swear that I wouldn't know because I'm very proud to say as Chief Officer in the Ministry of Education, Employment and Gender Affairs, I also have some nominees here and I'm very proud of them. So I'm going to be, I'm as excited as, as you all are to find out who the ultimate winner is going to be. But some of you may also wonder how we select among so many valuable civil servants uh, to, to, to in pursuit of excellence every day. Well, while we appreciate the hard work of all of our civil servants, through this program, we aim to identify people who display uh, excellence in a range of areas. We look for people with strong public sector values, who have strong customer service values. We also look to find people who, through their work and their attitude, it strongly reflects their department's mission and vision. We also ask nominators to select something we call the most theme. And this is a, the, probably the most creative aspect of the program because HOD's chief officers can identify a theme of their choosing. So their nomina uh, nominees can be most efficient, most reliable, etc. And they, uh, we're, they're asked to say how their nominee fits this theme. And as, in terms of commenting about the importance of this award and, and the whole issue of, of, of public sector excellence, we believe as the largest employer in the Cayman Islands, providing services to the residents of these islands, that it is critical that governments strive to be the best that we can possibly be. And during the upcoming 2013 campaign year of the Deputy Governor's Award program, we certainly would like to see an increase in participation from all civil servants, but in particular, a greater representation of our civil servants in the sister islands, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. And also, it, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention that although we're here to select an employee of the year, it's also important to take the time to extend our appreciation to all our hardworking civil servants for their contributions throughout this past year. And finally, some words to our nominees. The most important people here tonight, of course. By virtue of your nominations, you have all received what is arguably the highest accolade recognition of your pursuit of excellence in the display of public service values, the delivery of excellent customer service, and representing the very best of your respective departments. Receiving recognition for a job well done, especially when it's unexpected, can be humbling. But I also hope it's also inspiring and encouraging, not only to yourselves, because as you go about the work that you do every day, but also to other civil servants. As nominees, I encourage you to reflect on the fact that through your work and your achievements, you have left undoubtedly a lasting and positive impression, both on, your, on yourselves, but also of, of, the, of your departments and of the Cayman Islands Civil Service. We congratulate you. We thank you. And we do recognize that tonight not everyone can be named the Employee of the Year. But I do encourage you to consider yourself to be winners already. Not only because you have been selected as finalists for this award, but because you are being recognized as persons who have demonstrated a commitment to excellence and service. So my very sincere congratulations, my best wishes, and best of luck to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Rodriguez. I'd like to continue now by inviting each of the nominees to come up as I call your name. Uh, I'd like for you to stand out in front so that everyone can get a good look at you. 
Um, and I'll call the name of each employee of the month in chronological order. If you'll come up when I call your name, as I said, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, as each person comes up, um, I will give you a brief outline of each individual, um, how they exceeded the values and standards of the award before um, that. I should say that each nominee actually receives a letter from His Excellency the Acting Governor, Deputy Governor, Mr. Franz Manderson, as well as a framed certificate when they're named Employee of the Month. Well, just to summarize what that letter says, it points out that the recogni recognition bestowed upon the individual symbolizes and reinforces the values and standards that is expected of all civil servants. With that said, I'd like to invite the first Employee of the Month nominee for the month of August 2012, Ms. Lynette Monteith, to come up, please. In her letter, the Deputy Governor said, it is evident that student results at John Gray High School have shown steady gains, actually rising to record levels this year. As a product of your consistent, positive, careful, and prudent management, I'm aware that you sacrificed your personal time, including holidays, to ensure that the move to its new location happened and happened well. It is for these reasons that you were named the most effective in improving schools. The nominee for September 2012 is, is Mr. Mark Orr. Your letter said, not only have you been described as the best value for money that government has ever spent, but also you're described as a humble civil servant driven by the belief that your work makes a difference, standing highest in devotion to duty. Listing your personal contact details with emergency services and in public brochures for unfailing response at an hour and in any weather condition to conservation violations, pollution incidents, and search, search and rescue is a clear indication of your commitment. It is for these reasons that you were named the most devoted to service. Mr. Michael Miles is the Employee of the Month for October 2012. His letter says, Michael, you've been described as a passionate advocate for both services and funding for at-risk students within the government and private sector. You're also described as a champion of second chances, working tirelessly to raise awareness within schools across the government and the community. It was brought to my attention that you single-handedly raised over $150,000 for the at-risk program over the past two years and that your contributions to the best program and superior auto, auto apprenticeship programs are transformative. I understand that your personal story as a young Caymanian who overcame personal challenges has been paramount to your success. It is for these reasons described above that you were named the most effective student advocate. For the month of November 2012, Mr. Robert Yamas was named Best Employee of the Month. Robert, in your letter it said, it was brought to my attention that you display a keen knowledge of financial standards, ensure that the Cayman Islands laws and accounting standards are upheld, and that you mentor a team of mostly young Caymanians. I know that you've made great strides in using innovation to enhance revenue collection and reduce issues with problematic payables, thus contributing to the Ministry of Education's objective, continuing to enhance, monitor, report, and process. Your ability to make seamless connections with departments internal and external to your ministry and to guide departments with difficult accounting or procedural issues contribute to the reasons that you were named the most passionate for excellence. Mr. Nicholas McLean is the Employee of the Month for December 2012. His letter says, I am pleased to learn that you epitomize all the expectations of the ideal worker. It was brought to my attention that you will go out of your way to not only fix problems, but also that you do it in such a manner that all stakeholders are comfortable and confident. You're described as a forward thinker who will render assistance when required and look for ways to prevent, reduce, or alleviate problems. It is for these reasons afford mention that you're described as most dedicated. Mr. Selburn Christian is the Employee of the Month for January. Selburn, your letter said, it was brought to my attention that you have shown exemplary pro professionalism as a statistician and a pioneering unit of the Economics and Statistics Office. It is evident that you have consistently volunteered to work extra hours without government, without overpay, overtime pay, and that you worked beyond regular office hours in 36 out of the 52 work weeks of the year. In addition to this display of devotion to the Cayman Islands government, the quality 
ability and exceptional proficiency of your work has not gone unnoticed. You have risen to the occasion of multiple challenges, such as when you were required to complete the system of national account statistical report in the absence of your senior manager. It is your self-motivation, that res resourcefulness and expeditiousness that has contributed to your success. It is for these reasons that you were named the most professionally excellent. For the month of February 2013, Mr. Michael Godfrey was chosen as Employee of the Month. His letter said, Michael, I'm aware that you are the longest serving staff member of the Economics and Statistics Office and that you have been flexible in adapting new technologies moving from manual methods to computer-based verification methods. I'm pleased to know that you're con constantly seeking better data resources as well as more accurate classification and coding of imports data. It has been brought to my attention that despite various obstacles, you have worked with your supervisors to improve the quality of trade statistics over the years, and you have done this all without seeking additional compensation. I also commend you for exemplary ex service and dedication that extends beyond the civil service into the wider community. I have noted your involvement with the students at Savannah Primary School. It is for these reasons that you were named the most unsung hero. Ms. Azalea Waltler was named Employee of the Month for March. Azalea, your letter said, I'm aware that you are stationed at the Cargo Distribution Center and that you work tirelessly to ensure that cargo is selected for inspection in a timely and courteous manner. It was brought to my attention that you are the first one to report to work and the last one to leave, often working through your lunch hour to ensure the deliverance of continuous customer service. You are described as the epitome of great attitude because your attitude makes the difference between getting tasks done and making them fun. You inspire everyone around you as a result of your dedication and caring nature. It is for these reasons that you are named the most customer focused. <laughs> Mrs. Dacia Scott is Employee of the Month for the month of April. Dacia, your letter says, I am aware that you are a genuine humanitarian and a good communicator who remains impartial, courteous, understanding, receptive, and patient with clients. Not only do you obtain positive outcomes, but you also leave clients feeling satisfied. I've also learned that you follow up with external agencies or internal departments, which provide the sense of urgency that is expected. Finally, I understand that your dedication to the Cayman Islands government is beyond compare despite the demands of your personal life and devotion to your family. It is for these reasons that you were named the most passionate about clients' welfare. <laughs> Mr. Mark Luke is the Employee of the Month for May this year. Mark, your letter said, I'm aware that you have selflessly served the marine unit from its inception and leapt from the Pedro Castle Bluff on more than one occasion to save people's lives. It has also come to my attention that a swim and rescue victim offered you a financial reward for saving him or her, but instead of accepting the offer, you recommended that the money be sent to the police commissioner to be put in a welfare fund. It is for these reasons that you were named the most helpful. And finally, from our nominees, and certainly not least, Tamara Hurlston is the Employee of the Month for June. Tamara, your letter said, I am aware that over the course of one year, you spearheaded your department's efforts towards achieving efficiency, effectiveness, and value for money. I also understand that you are a civil servant with high standards. You consistently make decisions that are not only in your clients' best interests, but also in the interests of the staff whom you supervise. I was advised that your strong management skills have afforded you opportunities to act for the Director of Children and Family Services despite this being an area outside of your professional scope. Finally, despite all the demands that have been placed on you, you took on extra work, set up a pilot program for the needs assessment unit, and stayed within budget while also reducing the staff complement by two people. It is for these reasons that you were named the most efficient. And there, ladies and gentlemen, are the 11 civil servants who have been recognized as the employees of the month uh, let's hear another round of applause for all of them. Congratulations to each and every one of them. As Mr. Manderson and Mrs. Rodriguez said earlier, uh, the job of a civil servant is very, very important. Um, and uh, being one of the persons who 
I, I, I would personally like to be instrumental in, in painting a good picture or a great picture of all civil servants out there and my role uh, at CIG TV. Um, I'm an advocate for it. I believe that lots of good work happens within the civil servants and that we have some great civil servants um, across the board in, in every department and every unit. Um, and I think that's deserving of being highlighted and being focused upon. And you know, I'm sure that the, the powers to be uh, will agree with me on that. Uh, with that said, now one of these employees that we have um, focused on this evening uh, truly uh, stands out and we're going to recognize that person now with the Deputy Governor's Employee of the Year Award. Um, I'm going to just say a few words first because when this person was being recognized by their boss, I just want to tell you a little bit about what uh, they said about him or, or her. <laughs> the letter said, uh, this person exemplifies all expect expectations of the, the ideal worker. Their work ethics are unsurpassed. This person has never been absent from work. Wow. Never misses a deadline and even goes to work on the weekends without being asked to. This person gets along well with everyone they come in contact with and is a problem solver. He or she has never received a negative report. This individual is, all, is said to always look for ways to reduce and alleviate problems and they approach their work with zeal, enthusiasm and dedication. The nomination ended by saying this individual should be celebrated and is someone who has a bright future in whatever he or she chooses to do. And this evening, folks, I might add that we're here to celebrate this person. I'd like to once again call on the, His Excellency, the Acting Governor, Mr. Franz Manderson, and the Acting Deputy Governor, Mrs. Mary Rodriguez, to pre present the Deputy Governor's Employee of the Year Award. Um, I, I believe everyone is aware that whoever gets the award that they will come up and say a few words so if you haven't planned that as yet please think quickly because it could be any one of you. Um, any final words from either one of you before we, we, uh, we give the award over? <laughs> Alright and the Deputy Governor's Employee of the Year award goes to Nicholas McLean. And I understand that he's the youngest uh, out of all the nominees here uh, this evening. Congratulations to you, Nicholas. And of course, to all of your colleagues who all have uh, exceeded uh, the work of civil servant. And he's being presented with a plaque and they check. <laughs> All right, let's give him another round of applause. Good thing I put something together at the last minute then. <laughs> With protocol already having been established, I've always wanted to say that by the way, <laughs> I'll just say a pleasant good evening to all. Wow, this is an honor to be here, recipient of this award is an honest statement. Just to be grouped here with uh, other Employee of the Month awardees, fellow civil servants of the highest caliber. My grandfather always said that it's best to be thought a fool than open your mouth and remove all doubt, so I'll keep this short. <laughs> I've been really humbled by the presentation of this award. I would definitely say this caught me very much by surprise. As a fairly new civil servant, I've now been able to gain an insight per 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 sorry, perspective of what goes on and that there are many civil servants who put in long hours in hard work that are very deserving of this award. I would have to say this is a collective win 
for the entire Ministry of Education's ICT team. As without their help, along with that of the school's principal, who is also here as a fellow Employee of the Month awardee, it would be much more difficult to do my job. When I first started in this position, I quickly realized that IT, or ICT as it is now known in the school system, is now far more heavily integrated in the curriculum than it was in the past, spanning various subjects. It was that, at that time that I found out I had my work cut out for me. It is very rewarding to work at the high school, being able to provide staff and students with necessary ICT equipment and services. I encourage each and every one of, student, of the students to make full use of all resources, ICT and otherwise, mm -hmm. that are, are at their disposal for the enhancements of their school studies. By the nature of my job and the person that I am, I'm really a behind of the scenes type person and the presentation of this award I hope will serve as an example to students to in some way inspire them to focus on their studies and strive every day to be the best student they can. Last school year, John Gray High School initiated the High Five program, the five core values expected by students and staff alike. These are right time, right place, respect, responsibility, and achievement. After thinking about it, I realized how they complement my own personal values and work ethic. Once again, thank you and good night. Don't forget the check. Yes. <laughs> there you go. He was going to forget his check. <laughs> All right, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Ms. Mary to stay here at the podium with me for the final remarks. Um, yes. Well, I'm so excited and having heard that speech, it makes, it makes me know that that was the right choice as well amongst all the very, very wonderful and deserving candidates. Well done, Nicholas. We're very proud of you. The civil service in the Cayman Islands government is in pursuit of excellence. And tonight is a night to celebrate the important steps that we are making to live up to this mantra. Congratulations, of course, to all the nominees. We have heaped accolades on you tonight because those are deserving. And I certainly, as I sat here uh, um, listening to the comments, re just reiterating once again, not only how important this award is, but, but celebrating the excellence that is found in every department within our civil service. So congratulations to all the nominees tonight, um, and of course a special congratulation to, to, to Nicholas, our Nicholas. I get to claim him for the Ministry <laughs> of Education. But in terms of thanks, we want to send on behalf of the Acting Governor and the Deputy Governor's Office thanks to everyone for coming out tonight. Thanks to our Honorable Premier, other Ministers of Government for being here. I think that sends a very, very important and much appreciated message to our civil servants to have you here to witness and be a part of this, this event. Thanks to, to all the others who have come tonight to be a part of the celebrations. Thanks, of course, to our hostess with the mostess, Ms. Donna, our <laughs> MC. Um, thanks to the staff of the governor's office as well as the deputy governor's office for all the arrangements tonight and thanks to GIS for the coverage um, for, the, for our, our television and, and our phot uh, photography coverage and, and thanks to everyone for being a part of this and I hope that other civil servants will reflect on this night and this award ceremony as something that is very very important in terms of supporting us in our pursuit of excellence within the civil service. Thank you all enjoy the rest of the evening.